All right, so we are in Albuquerque, New Mexico, on our way home with the 55, and we managed to meet up with Rob. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you have? It's my Cummins Swap Ranger. Nice. <laughs> You guys have been asking for me to get into a Ranger and I, so many comments, build a Ranger, build a Ranger. I think this is almost the perfect one right here. Yeah, I think if I can fit a Cummins in a Ranger, we can fit a Rich in a Ranger, so. <laughs> but that's the issue, do I fit in the Ranger? Here we go. <laughs> uh, this is not good because they actually fit pretty decent. Uh-oh, there goes your argument. Yeah, now I gotta build a Ranger. Well, look at this one better than mine. <laughs> Was this one for sale? Yeah. <laughs> Everything's for sale, Rich. An industrial one? I don't know, I got it from some Amish guy. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have an alternator because they don't do electricity. Yeah. So um, no, you know what it had it had the it had the emissions tag on it. Oh, okay, all right. It okay. had the emissions tag on it, so it is an on-road. Okay, nice. So what what your ranger is it? What made you do this? Um, it's an 88 and I moved to the DC area. I had a crew cab, looked just like F3 Kitty. Okay. But it was just way too big for me. So I sold it. Still want a diesel truck, and they don't make small diesel trucks. At least then they didn't. Yeah. Um, so I made one. Nice. And people ask me, why'd you put a 4BT in a Ranger? And I say, because a 6BT wouldn't fit. Uh, so how long have you had it functioning uh, now? So I bought it in uh, 2014. Got it on the road in 2015. Okay. So I daily drove it for, you know, five or six years. Oh, nice. Uh, so how many miles did you put on it? So my speedometer didn't work for about 50,000 miles. And right now it says 24, so we'll say, you know, 70,000 miles, give or take. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. And you ran vegetable oil, correct? Right? I did run veggie. Um, not anymore. I, I put the fuel system back to stock, okay. if you will. Um, but it was just something fun to do to, you know, people in Priuses know you're getting better fuel economy than them. Yeah, and you're know. better for the environment right. than they are. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Excellent. Nothing better than uh, making EV people realize they're killing the earth. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you should be driving a Cummins. Yeah. <laughs> Any quirks you gotta know about? Uh, I don't think so. Steering super tight. It's the, um, you know, it's a gasser. ZF5, so you really feel like you're missing a gear between third and fourth okay. on the diesel, but it doesn't matter. I mean, yeah. Everything should work the way it's supposed to. Okay. It's not too bad for vibration just sitting there. It's not too bad. No. And the, the ZF5, there's the, the lash, the factory lash yeah. specs, they're so loose that the gear rollover noise is probably what annoys me more than anything. Oh, yeah. When it's idling, you know? Yeah. But with the cruise control, you gotta be careful because when you're in fifth gear and you've got the cruise set at 80, and it'll do 80. Yeah. Um, it'll make enough boost, give enough fuel to you know, go up all the grades, but it'll eat itself. I have to watch the EGTs because, yeah. you know, it'll easy hit get over 1200 without thinking about it in fifth when you're just cruising yeah, pull down a gear yeah. and then uh smoke to them like a cruise when you're not paying attention um no not really no i don't have the fuel turned up too high okay know. i'm probably yeah so you're a couple turns off like yeah. you have the pin in there or? i've got the stock pin rotated to the most yeah okay. the best spot i had one of the aftermarket pins and it's just too touchy okay you know for an old man like me i'm just like yeah but you know, it's got 355 gears in it. Okay. And it's on 35. Yep. And, yeah, you know, that's pretty well perfect. So and can't... it's got it's got the spring, you know, the governor's spring. Yeah. So you yeah. can't go less than uh, 373. Great. Right. 
So the suspension, what is it? The springs are, they're out of like an 87 E350 van diesel. And it was just a shot in the dark um, to go with those because I knew the engine was going to weigh so much more than what was in here. It was a little 2.9 in here. And yeah. The 4BT weighs probably 400 pounds more. <clears throat> and it worked out pretty good. I had to cut like a half a coil off to get it just where I wanted it. Okay. But it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a pretty good fit, I think, for the weight. Yeah, it rides pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, the axles, it's still got the TTB front end. It's out of a Ford Explorer. It's a Dana 35, which is a real common swap guys do on these because they're just stronger. These came with a Dana 28. Okay. They're just made of glass. <clears throat> <laughs> and I always kind of had the back of my mind that I was going to have to put a solid axle in the front just because of the weight. I didn't think I could keep wheel bearings in it. But so far, you know, good. 70,000 ish miles. Like it's been okay. Yeah. And who cares if you got to do wheel bearings after yeah. 70,000 miles? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what, that's, that's pretty good for a wheel bearing, right? Yeah. 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 So, how many hours do you think? got into the build. So I had a typical nine to five job and I'd come home and try to spend three hours a night, you know, on it. Nice. And I worked on it for the better part of a year. Okay. So whatever that, you know, works out to be. And then, you know, then five you- Five nights a week? Um, probably six. Wow. You know, um, and then, then you get it on the road and that's a whole other thing. Like all the things, oh, I, you know, didn't realize this, you know, we were talking like the oil pan, you know, I, yeah. Didn't like the way that came out, so then you get to the list of things you wanted to redo. Yeah. Um, you have to pull the engine to get the oil pan out? Um, luckily, no, I was able to jack it up, you know, okay. just enough to get it out of there. It would have been nice if I just, yeah. looking back on it, I should have, I should have probably pulled the engine, that probably would have been easier. Yeah, I see what you mean about a big lull between sure. third and fourth, yeah, it's not like, a little too high revs and a little too and, luggy in the... Right, and 40 miles an hour is like the worst. You yeah. Because you're like always wanting that gear that doesn't exist. Right, right. But the thing is, the ZF5, you can get it in a small block forward pattern. So anything with like, you know, like a, a 351 gasser OBS, if it's got a ZF, it'll have a ZF5 behind it. Yeah. It's got the small block forward pattern and it's a Cummins part that I've got because the red vans came with four transmissions behind yeah, it. Yeah. So if you get the, you know, get a transmission with the small block Ford pattern, it bolts right up. Nice. You don't need to go buy an adapter or all that stuff. Yeah. But yeah. it's a gas or transmission, so it's the wide ratio. Yeah. So that's why you're missing a gear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, stock turbo? Yeah, stock turbo, kind of a weird location. I had to kind of, real estate's a problem, so I flipped a 5.9 uh, manifold okay. <clears throat> to get it up high. Yeah. And I was able to keep the AC, but it's actually a Mustang AC condenser. It's the same fittings, same shape, but it's shorter. Oh, okay. So you can see my downpipe just barely misses the uh, AC box right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's tight. <laughs> but the stock one sticks out two or three inches. Okay. Farther, so. Very nice. So AC works. AC works. Cruise control works. That's what this is. So there's no vacuum on this truck. All the yes. um, you know, all the controls are just cable. So I don't have a vacuum pump. I don't have any nothing vacuum operated. Okay. So Hydro boost is off an OBS and it actually bolts right up. It's a gasser, so small block Ford uh, gasser ZF5. Okay. Five speed, 1356 transfer case out of an F350. Okay. Um, and so I had to do a body lift to get it all to fit because with my skill set I didn't want to get cut into the pinch weld and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. So I kind of hate that it's got a body lift, but it definitely saved me a lot of hassle just getting things the three inches. It's well, just the proper excuse to now turn it on off-road rig well, there you and go. go go off-roading. That's right. And things lead into from one into the next. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So uh, engine mounts, how'd you do that? Um, several times. Yeah. <laughs> just getting the what was the issue? Um, so I'm actually, I'm on the, um, on one side, I'm on the mid mount on this Cummins block and I use the Ranger clamshell mounts, but on this corner, I'm, I'm grabbing the front corner. So it's kind of in there. Oh. I'm grabbed on this corner on this side just because of packaging. Okay. Um, and I did have to uh, modify the cross member. The cross member's four inches lower than it was. Okay. So I could run the full size oil pan. Okay. So you didn't modify the oil pan? Well, I did modify the oil pan and it, you know, I could never get it to seal 
to the block, you know, I, the, oh. the, the amount I had to modify it, um, it always worked. The plans would work. Okay. I just had trouble with it. Um, plus, certain angles and stuff, like when I was slowing down hard, I could see where I'd lose oil pressure. Oh. So I'm like, I'm just going to put the, you know, do what I need to do to get the stock oil pan in there. Yeah. Because clearly oh, it wasn't working. Okay. So that's when I lowered the cross member to get it all the fit. So. Okay. So, so. You modified it, but you shouldn't have. You should have, like, you went with the stock one. Yep. yep okay. That's what's in there now. Nice. And it's front sump, so most of these are rear sump, but you can buy the front sump, just flip the pan around, you know, and the, yep. the right pickup. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. And what's your mileage? The best, the best I ever had was 30. Wow. But I was really trying, you know, I was like, really, like, I'm going to see. But if I just drive it, I get like 20, 21. Uh, and so yeah. that's roughly what I got with the Tahoe. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe a little less, it would weighed a little bit more. Um, usually around 19, something like that. Yeah. I see all these people like, ah, I can get high 20s. I'm like, no, you no. can't. <laughs> you can't if you're going downhill, you know, you're trying. But, yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. just when you come from like a, a Cummins 12 valve, those are so smooth. Yeah. They're loud, but they're so smooth. Yeah. And this is just, you know, night and day. Like when you lose those two cylinders, it's just not as balanced. Yeah, There's nothing yeah. you can do. Guys try to put dampers on them and do all kinds of things. It doesn't, yeah. doesn't matter. It doesn't work. They just shake. That's yeah. just the way they are. That's all there is to it. Yeah. And then the stock brakes? Um, stock brakes and they, I feel like if I put any more work into the truck, I think that's what I'll upgrade. Okay. I do have discs in the rear because the, the axle in the rear is out of the same Ford Explorer that have disc okay. brakes. So, but the the front calipers are, I feel like with the 35s and all this weight, the truck yeah. weighs about 40, 300 pounds. Okay. I feel like they're just a little too small. Yeah. The panic yeah. stops once in a while. I feel like, man, I wish I had a little more brake. I mean, they're fine, but yeah, I think it'd be a good upgrade. Yeah, right on. Running the vegetable oil, you think you got all your money back in fuel savings? I think so. Yeah. I had it. There was a guy I had. It was a food truck vendor. Um, and you know he had really good clean stuff, so it was it was easy to to filter. Okay. And you know, I don't do the math, but 60,000 miles. And I would start it up in Just the morning. Just ask a Tesla owner. Fifty thousand, seventy thousand miles, no cost of fuel. Right. They'll, they'll tell you. Yeah. And I <laughs> I'd start it up in the morning on diesel until it gave it to temperature. Yeah. And click it over. So and you'd have a have two a system tank. Like yeah, dual, dual, tank? dual tanks. Okay. Um, the veggie was heated and separate filter. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. And it was fun. It's a fun thing to do. Yeah. Um, but now I just don't, you know, I don't put the miles on anymore. I don't, yeah, it, it's, yeah. you know, it's messy. And yeah. It was yeah. nice to just kind of get it all back. So when fuel hit its peak cost, you're like, eh, that's what I had done. Yeah, I'll just pay for it. Right, right, <laughs> right. The fuel go, diesel goes up to five bucks a gallon. I'm like, yeah, let's tear all this veggie shit out of here. I've been paying, you know, a dollar eighty-five. Yeah, exactly. That's how the timing goes. Yeah. So, what are the mods if you're gonna for take it off road? Uh, well, the first thing is I put a winch on the front. Okay. Tuck that behind the front bumper. Yeah. More um, weight on the front. I like it. I put a uh, right. Yeah, because you know we don't have any in the back, so let's stick with the theme. Um, and then uh, ARB air lockers in the rear axle. Okay. Um, and of course the compressors for air and up and air and down. So I'm gonna go with that, you know, okay. see how I do. And then um, the next step will be upgrading the front axle. Yeah. You know, to, cause the, you know, TTB, like when you get it set up great, it's actually pretty nice. But yeah. the problem is if you hit a bump too hard and you know, tweak something, you've thrown out your camera caster and tow. Yes. If you, you know, take it off roading, smack a rock, you throw out your camera caster and tow. You're going to run over. It's a dedicated off-road vehicle. Who cares? Right. But if you're going to drive it home that right. afternoon, uh, 
you, you run over a cigarette butt, you know, throw out your camera cast through a coat, you know. <laughs> so it, it's just hard to keep dialed. <laughs> yeah. for taking the time and showing that. Um, and you guys, uh, this, these are here to motivate you guys to finish your projects, to get out there and work on it. Three hours a night, six days a week, that's all it takes. <laughs> and a year later, <laughs> you've got a beautiful ride. So um, don't forget that if you're signed up as a builder member, you get discounts to all the companies that we work with, Exhaust, um, every all, all the companies that we like to deal with, we like to pass those savings on to you guys. Um, and remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. So get out there and work on it, because then you've got something cool. Because what else do you drive? Something new and shiny with really nice, comfortable interior, right? Well, I mean, it's a 2001 7.3 power stroke excursion. <laughs> <laughs> See, I forget that stuff doesn't rot away here and they keep <laughs> nice stuff around. But anyway, again, thank you very much. Yep. And uh, don't forget to submit your rides, because when we're passing through, uh, you might get a text or a phone call from Aaron saying, hey, what are you doing uh, at this time? And uh, we get to hang out for a little bit. So here we go.